Good afternoon. Welcome to the UK Column News. It is the 10th of February 2014 and it's just gone one o'clock. Myself, Louise Collins, Brian Gerrish and Nick are here in Plymouth. Afternoon. Good afternoon. It's cold. I think that's all we can say. It's cold, slightly dampish, misty, temperature about eight degrees here in Plymouth. And uh, from what we gather, similar in other parts of the UK. Um, where do we go from here? We always have a think, um, yes. but probably the most important news at the moment, of course, is to do with Madonna. Yeah, absolutely. So the Grammy Awards went on on Sunday. Top of the bill was Madonna, who was true to form as High Priestess and performed a satanic ceremony live to an adoring crowd uh, with horned demons all over the place and uh, raising her up as an offering. Um, well, here are some, uh, here's a couple of photos of the uh, of, stage of, event. Of the stage event. So there she um, is being raised up as an offering. And these, these are her bulls, I think. Yeah. So simulated sex on stage by her, what many people would regard as demonic bulls. And um, of course, she's also been at this little game. Quite a long time. Yeah, there she is at the Super Bowl back in 2012. And prior to that, the uh, shocking performance with Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera at the VMAs back in 2003. So uh, high priestess role in uh, still going strong. No uh, one's taken that crown just yet. Uh, that's absolutely true. But of course, um, it's um, Brit British and American mainstream uh, press and media which are pushing out this uh, despicable material. And as we'll see shortly, uh, it also has links back into David Cameron's Conservative Party. But probably the government thinks that we need dumbing down further, not enough sex, um, not enough of Madonna and satanic ceremonies on stage. Now they're going to go for our minds through the Indeed. water supply. So we knew this was going on over in America, but researchers in Scotland are researching whether adding lithium to the water could help mental health. They looked at a study from Austria and Japan which found that people whose water contained lithium were less likely to kill themselves. Many parts of the UK already have fluoride in their water and the article does highlight some of the health risks and dangers that fluoride in the water can bring. Um, they also mention about chlorine but no mention of the chloramines which are even more toxic than actual chlorine. And uh, they actually do, I'll give them a, a brownie point for this, they highlight um, al aluminium and what that can do to Alzheimer's patients as well. So so watch out, um, you could be having lithium added to your water very soon. My advice, get a proper decent water filter which takes out fluoride and everything else. So um, very interesting that this is coming in on the back, of course, multiple suicides in South Wales. British mainstream press has simply stopped talking about um, this very worrying phenomena. It took the UK column to research what was happening. And in a conversation we had yesterday with members of the community in South Wales, uh, suicides still continuing um, amongst school children at very worrying levels. Total silence in the media. Why, what do you think that why, is? Well, I'm introduce it because, um, of course, we've uh, seen psychiatrists suggesting that lithium should also be introduced into the water in, in Wales, South yeah. Wales in order to stop the uh, spate of suicide. So. Uh, we'll leave the public to research that, but we know that many people in South Wales deeply concerned. And of course, when the UK column approached um, both uh, members of parliament, Madeline Moon being one, and some of the health uh, help groups in South Wales to say, uh, we're deeply concerned about plays and images being uh, shown to young people in South Wales, nobody wanted to know. So something strange going on. Could it be the suicides have been encouraged in order to uh, help promote the drive for lithium Poss quite possibly, in, in the yeah. water? Well, talking about death, uh, we're now up to the 71st international banker who has died. And this has just been uh, reported with uh, political velcraft. And um, uh, they've got an article talking about this uh, gentleman, JP Morgan banker, Michael A. Tabachi, 27. Uh, apparently stabbed his wife, Iran Paz Tabachi, 41, and then turned the knife on himself in Bergen County, New Jersey. So I'm sure many people are going to look at this with interest, um, that um, you're going to commit suicide, you're going to kill your wife, you're going to stab her, and then you're going to turn the knife on yourself. It's, it's an interesting concept in a land where, of course, if you want to commit suicide, you can freely buy a gun. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Maybe they should start putting uh, lithium in the water for the bankers. Well, maybe they should put lithium in the water of the Houses of Parliament to see how our MPs get on. Uh, but 71 international bankers dead, nothing to see, no problem with fraud and corruption uh, within the international banking community. Um, well, mm. David Cameron, of course, um, pay rises. Indeed. King Cameron is giving a speech today to big business, encouraging them to reward their employees with a pay rise to put the feel-good factor back into the economy. Uh, apparently, wages have risen 1.8% over the last year, 2.2% in the private sector and 1.2% in, um, in the public sector. Um, so uh, will that mean... Um, He's going to uh, push for the same type of pay rise that the MPs received last year, which, if we remember, 10% pay rise uh, they received last year. And maybe he could pass a bit of that advice on to Mr Jeremy Hunt, who refused nurses and frontline workers, NHS frontline workers, a 1% pay rise also just last year. So it's getting um, easier and easier to see that we've got a political elite installed in power, just as Tony Blair uh, promised um, uh, way back in 2001, I think it was, when he was telling people that uh, uh, we would be living in a society where people would be appointed into positions of power. And of course, yesterday we reported the extraordinary news that uh, senior members of the um, Lib Dem party were saying that Nick Clegg would be Prime Minister um, in order to act as a uh, um, caretaker Prime Minister uh, as they debated how the super coalition was to be sorted out. So a political elite moving into power, clearly not interested in elections, or maybe they are. We'll have a look at who's funding that. Um, but uh, for, for people working in ordinary jobs, you're going to be at minimum wages or you're going to be on zero hour contracts. Yeah, exactly. For a long time. <laughs> For a long time, indeed. Um, well, we're going to ask this question. Uh, where is Melanie Shaw and is she safe? The Beechwood uh, Children's Home whistleblower and child abuse victim Melanie Shaw at the moment seems to have disappeared. It may be that Melanie's taken herself somewhere safe. Uh, but many of us are deeply concerned that Melanie has been out of touch for several days. Uh, this is despite the fact that um, Nottinghamshire Police, and in particular Paddy Tipping, the Pol Police and Crime Commissioner, in a recent email, has been reassuring people that Melanie is in good health. He says here, Dear Mr Walker, it was good of you to write to me again about Melanie Shaw. I saw Melanie just a few days ago. Although many of the points you raise are operational outside my remit and the responsibility of Nottinghamshire Police, I've discussed them with the force. I am satisfied that Nottingham Police are conducting a thorough investigations into the allegations of child sexual abuse. You will appreciate that because of the confidential concerns, there is a limit to what I can share with third parties. Uh, to which we say it's remarkable that uh, Mr Tipping is continuing to uh, claim that Nottinghamshire Police are investigating the Beechwood abuses uh, because, of course, it was Melanie Shaw who revealed uh, that um, she ha held evidence that Nottinghamshire Police were failing to investigate uh, on her information. So we wait to see what is actually happening. If anyone has any um information as to the whereabouts and indeed safety of Melanie Shaw, uh, UK column staff would like to know. Of course, in asking this, we respect Melanie's wish for privacy and confidentiality if indeed she has gone to a safe refuge. Well, in other parts of the uh, country, there's uh, concern, in particular in the Asian community, around the death of this policeman, PC Hassan. And uh, after all of the um, uh, information about paedophiles printed and in particular events in Rotherham, this is uh, one particular case that seems to have been totally ignored by the mainstream and local press. And we understand that um, community, Asian community members in uh, Rotherham are alleging that this police officer was targeted by Rotherham police colleagues after he began to express concern at the failure of the police and authorities to tackle paedophile activity. 
And uh, if we follow the story through, what uh, seems to have happened is accusations were made against him that he'd been involved um, improperly with some of the victims. And uh, we are told, uh, it is an allegation, but we are told that uh, some members of the Asian community understood that he had revealed, PC Hassan had revealed he was going to take particular action in order to expose this. And a few days later, uh, he was killed in a road accident. So, I didn't see. I did see something about a, a somebody, uh, a police officer, investigating the Rotherham sex abuse scandal. I did see that in the mail, yeah. but it didn't go into it in length like you have there. Well, the it, star, it just... the star article which we've just put on screen is simply explaining uh, the, the the fact that he's been killed in yeah, a road yeah, yeah. article. They are not commenting on the fact on the matters we are commenting on. Is that is there more to this story than meets the eye? Um, and of course, we know that people who went to Nottingham in order to help um, Melanie Shaw um, were themselves involved in a very strange road act, or in one case, a road accident, uh, where after a collision, um, a person was then followed by the car which had hit them. And despite information and a registration number being put into Nottinghamshire police, no action was taken by local police forces. So many people would say that across uh, UK, including Scotland, there is an overwhelming um, campaign by the establishment to cover up child abuse and perhaps a time, timely time to bring in uh, Robert Green, who of course is due to go back into Aberdeen Court for sentencing on the 4th of March. And uh, it's taken the Warrington Guardian to at least put out some more background information about Robert's campaign to protect not only abuse victim Holly Gregg, but other children from the paedophile activity of gangs, which include Scottish establishment members. So we wait and see what happens uh, to that court case. There is a possibility that Robert may be put back into prison, in which case he will have served three terms. Yeah, I was about to say, how many terms does that mean? Three terms uh, for his efforts to actually protect children. Well, perhaps some of the mainstream uh, media is beginning to wake up to what is really going on in Scotland. And our own reporter, David Scott, has been saying live with UK Column that Scotland is becoming a very dark and dangerous place. But this was a key headline from the Daily Mail over the last few days. Here we are, the Tartan Stalinists. And uh, what is the paper highlighting? It's the forced sale of country estates snooping state guardians for every child. And remember that the Scottish minister involved in this said casually, well, of course, there will be state guardians for every child, but parents will also have a role to play. Oh, that's good. Uh, fantasy, no, it's um, the stark reality of an SNP landslide. And this is the key part of this article because what we're essentially being warning, what we're being warned about is that Alex Salmon, uh, who uh, originally said, well, if I lose the vote, I'm going to stand yep. down. He's now actively campaigning to return to the Commons as an MP, where he says he is going to hold England's feet to the fire. So Alex Salmon, SMP, believes that he's going to introduce torture back into Westminster. And of course, uh, the SMP uh, UK column is very certain will be a key party within the super coalition that's being built. Great. It, Any good news? Well, the good news is that this is coming out uh, step by step, uh, not only to the wider general public, but of course the media as we're seeing. And the Mail also beginning to highlight here what's been going on yep. around the Tories and fundraising. So bankers, pawn business bosses all came together last night at the Grosvenor for the Conservatives' black and white tie, uh, black and white fundraising ball. Tickets were priced between fifty uh, five hundred pounds and a thousand, and guests included Peter Stringfellow and Summers founders David Gold and his daughter Jacqueline. And uh, they were joined by Tory MPs, bankers, actors, and the aim was to to raise three million for the Tory election campaign. Uh, King Cameron and his wife Samantha were also in attendance. So we can't do anything for the victims of child abuse, but we can have um, banquets with porn, porn the porn industry yeah. with uh, with bankers who 
who presumably are part of the corrupt international banking system. Uh, welcome to David Cameron's Conservative Party. Does anybody really not understand why Britain is being dragged into such a mess? Um, Peter Stringfellow in the article was uh, was classed as a gentleman's club owner, not a... Uh, well, maybe that, was, that, maybe that was tongue-in-cheek, I maybe, think. Maybe, maybe. So, and of course, if you... Uh, if you're happy with porn, you're certainly happy with arms. Exactly. Campaign against arms against arms trade have named 40 serving MPs who attended this year's banquet for defence and securities companies, uh, costing £250 a head. Uh, it was take, it took place at the Hilton Park Lane. The UK's biggest arms manufacturers invited guests such as Vince Cable and Margaret Beckett to join them at the posh event. Hosting the event was the BBC's Jeremy Vine, where it's being reported he was paid a five-figure sum. Um, so, uh, so well ching, done. ching for him. Well, the B um, B sorry to interrupt on. you, <laughs> you Louise, but of course, let's say, well, the BBC makes huge profit out of reporting wars overseas. So what better for the BBC to help sell those arms in the first well, place? Well, the BBC were questioned about it and apparently uh, Jeremy Vine is a freelance journalist and is free to attend whatever events he chooses to. So the BBC condones the action of Jeremy Vine. Exactly. And I think you had a list here of... Um, yep, such... here's the list. If you go on to uh, the website Campaign Against Arms Trade, you will find a list of all the MPs and who they were guests of. I've just highlighted a couple. We had uh, Margaret Beckett, who was the guest. If you can bring that next slide up, it'll show who Margaret Beckett's. There you go. Margaret Beckett was guest of Rolls-Royce. Vince Cable was uh, guest of ADS. And uh, Alex Dresden, who is uh, apparently Dresden. appearing uh, for Nick Clegg in uh, Nick Clegg's uh, absence, he went and attended for him. And, and Raytheon. Was, uh, yeah, for Raytheon. So, um, it's good, isn't it? it Whining it, and dining with porn stars and, uh, and, arms and, and arms dealers. And these are the people who will be forming this super coalition if we, the public, don't take the action required to actually prevent what's going on. Uh, well, we get another glimpse into the dirty deals amongst all three parties with uh, this little unique gathering. Yep, Jack Straw has been offered a seat in the House of Lords before the release of the Chilcot Inquiry. Straw, who was Blair's Foreign Secretary at the time of the 2003 conflict, um, and who was equally responsible for misleading the public over Saddam Hussein and his uh, weapons of mass dis destruction, is said to be open to accepting the peerage. Mr. Straw, who has given evidence three times to the Chilcot inquiry, has said reports of it being delayed by witnesses were wholly without foundation. So we can see him uh, stepping into his robes very shortly. Right, so, but this is after the election? I, I missed that bit. No, it's, I think it's going to be before the election right. and before the release of the Chilcot inquiry as well. Okay, well, if you've done a good job um, with your, for your international masters, of course, you're going to be rewarded and become a lord. Um, in the background, though, sinister manoeuvring by Britain's security services, and it took the UK column to highlight this court case on the 2nd of February uh, between Liverpool businessman Philip Kerr and MI5. And uh, what the businessman uh, was saying, essentially, was that uh, from the time he refused the advances of MI5, he refused to work with them and uh, act as an agent and supply them with information. He was targeted to harassment and abuse and uh, generally ter terrorised. And uh, it took him um, acting not only with a professional legal team, but also um, lay people uh, to force this hearing into the High Court. Now, this is significant because usually uh, these uh, type of cases are pushed through the Investigatory Powers Tribunal, which of course sit in secret. So we reported the hearing taking place. We, as yet, we're not aware of any other reports, but we understand that uh, the judge reserved judgment. So essentially, uh, the case heard, but there's no outcome to the case, and the judge has gone away to think about it, presumably. Uh, the judge has gone away to think about it and consult with other people in the establishment to decide what to do. So when are we looking for a result? Uh, could be months. Uh, sometimes uh, judgment can be reserved for months. So we will see. But compare it with this one. Um, and we've, we were sent this this morning from blacklisted news in historic ruling UK surveillance secrecy 
declared unlawful. And this article is claiming that um, GCHQ uh, has acted unlawfully by keeping details about the scope of its internet spying operations secret. And it says a British court made this ruling. Uh, but in fact, if you read further down, the ruling was, in, was, according to this article, handed out by the Investigatory Powers Tribunal, which is itself a secret uh. Uh, session. So we've got some very interesting stuff emerging. We've got MI5 um, uh, being uh, taken to court for harassment, threats, bullying. And uh, now we've got GCHQ breaking the law. But don't worry, of course, because the people controlling them are into porn and um, dinners with arms dealers. Good. So we've pointed this out. Russia today, uh, it's, t it's taken the Russians to start to pull apart what's really going on in Britain's political system. And here, here was their article pointing out that if you dare to c criticise uh, the British government, uh, Westminster, all the establishment, uh, then you're likely to be branded a domestic extremist. And uh, we were fascinated to receive this article from the Nottingham Post, uh, which is um, our very own Ken Clark MP speaking at East Leak uh, Academy, uh, where he said to mainly young uh, youngsters, I believe a, a young audience, extremists and crackpots are overrepresented on social media. So that's what Ken had to say. But of course, let's remember that Ken Clark is the man who said that all right thinking citizens should support secret courts. So here we are with a big push by Ken Clark for a crackdown on social media because anybody who dares criticize is an extremist. And uh, what is he really aiming at? Well, he's aiming at more of the secret courts. So the criminal activity of uh, presumably government members and our security services can be hidden. Uh, what an extraordinary situation uh, we've got in UK. And uh, we're just going to ask, is Ken one of the most dangerous men in uh, politics? Uh, well, if you're not aware of what is going on in the country, uh, have a look at the UK Column website. And uh, we mentioned this gentleman yesterday, Connor Geerty. Uh, an Irishman educated at Cambridge, of course, involved with Matrix Chambers and the London School of Economics. And he's basically pumping out the same old lie that we have no constitution. So we're going to say what better advert for the British Constitution Group Conference, the time for action, which will be in Telford uh, from, uh, sorry, that's February the 27th, 27th of February to the 1st of March. 2015 and uh, we're going to ask all of our supporters and viewers and listeners we need your help to promote this conference uh, we need to bring people together to discuss the reality of the attack on britain's constitution and of course within the conference we will be uh, setting up a grand jury uh, to look at the subject of institutional child abuse and the fact that uh, um, a grand jury can sit in order to make a decision. And that decision that we're looking for is, is there a case to answer? Can we uh, give some names out of who's speaking? Uh, we are going to do that very shortly. Okay. We're very shortly when the programme will come out. Um, but uh, the key point is that this is going to be a very different format from the way the British Constitution yeah. Group's approached um, uh, a conference before. And we know we are very sure that the um, grand jury is going to make a big impact. We do need your help with this. And uh, we're going to say thank you very much to the person who sent us in this wonderful photograph. Uh, we're not advertising little. What we're saying is this is the difference a sticker can make. Uh, this is real. It, it's not an altered image. Um, but uh, we're going to say, have you got your UK column sticker? Uh, and if you like what we do, we need your help to spread the word and advertise what we're doing. Without, Definitely. without supporters, uh, we can't function. And we'll just say to people, we are very aware of the cost of events that we put on. However, at the end of the day, UK Column has to fund the activities it does. So if you can't attend the conference, for example, because you can't afford it, we would say to, to you, please do your best to get other people there who in this case can. Well, 
If we're being watched, um, who's watching us? Ah, oh, looks like Samsung. New privacy policy for smart TVs made by Samsung. Um, are an Orwellian dream come true. The voice recognition software transmits data of what viewers are saying and sends it off to a third party. And the privacy policy even state that viewers should be aware of their spoken word and personal info, as it could be among data sent to third parties through voice recognition. Now, so, we've been talking about this for quite a long time. And it's reality. And it, is... it really is reality. And uh, it's the new TVs, smart TVs that Samsung are doing and uh, listening to every single word you're saying in your front room, and then it will go on to like a third party, and then it will tailor adverts for you. And, as uh, a start. As a, as a, yeah, start. But Samsung does say, well, you shouldn't worry about this because you know they have people's security and best interests at heart, and data is encrypted. Oh, of course. So we'll lead you to think about that as you discuss your private life in front of the television. Why do we need televisions in uh, people's homes? Well, for spying, basically. And uh, very interesting here that uh, after our headline yesterday where we picked up BBC Monitoring, who, who uh, BBC Monitoring have been searching the world for a suitable soft porn headline, which it did with a phallus that they found in New Zealand. Um, this is what's been going on in the House of Lords, and uh, basically they've decided that uh, non-payment of a licence fee is to remain a criminal offence. But if we look at the text of this uh, article, uh, what we find is that a whole range of former BBC employees took part in the vote. A number of peers spoke in the debate, and these include, included Lord Grade, former BBC chairman, Baroness Benjamin, um, Fluella Benjamin, former BBC Children's TV presenter, Lord Cashman, former East Enders actor, and Viscount Colville de Col Ross, a BBC producer. They did declare an interest, um, but uh, basically it was pointed out, of course, that if they'd stood aside, actually this vote would have gone a different way. But don't worry, because all these people are independent. Fluella Benjamin from Play School fame. Uh, well, she's, she's been. She's a lord, is she? It would appear so, playing in the House of Lords, no doubt. Now, how is Britain really being taken apart? Well, just have a look at this. Again, thank you very much for the person who sent this in. It's a little advert, a pre press release for a new partnership to protect the public. Uh, it is a private, voluntary company working links, and it's now responsible for the delivery of the Dorset, Devon and Cornwall Community Rehabilitation Company in partnership with Innovation Wessex, a mutual community interest company made up of former probation trust workers. So trust us, these are the people who are going to be rehabilitating people back into the community. They're private, they're voluntary, and presumably they are completely unaccountable. Well, what sort of people make up this interesting organisation? This is just a couple of people from the board. Uh, we've got Millie uh, Banerjee, CBE chairman. She's had a long and varied career in both the private and public sectors. Uh, she spent 25 years with BT, um, but she's also been a board member of Bart's Health, and she's been a non-executive director of the Cabinet Office, Channel 4 TV, the Prisons Board, the Peabody Trust, and Ofcom. She was also chair of Postwatch, and the postal regulator Postcom, and she's involved with the Carnegie UK Trust. Well, if you don't like uh, the look of that, have a look at Philip Andrew, chief executive, uh, because he's been very big in Sodexo, the very prison that we've reported wow. on, uh, where Melanie Shaw suffered so much. Uh, he's been chief executive for Sodexo Justice Service um, Services, uh, Rehabilitation Custodial Services, and here he is um, uh, talking about uh, a £1.3 billion turnover and 40,000 employees. Uh, we'll give you one more. Please have a look at all this yourself. Here's Catherine Yeomans, and she's been appointed CEO of Mission Australia in March 2014. So she's sorting out the Australians and she's also sorting oh, out she's... rehabilitation of people in this country. And if you're saying, what on earth is Mission Australia? Well, here it is. Um, it's a strategic plan to help children, values, families right the way across uh, Australia. And it says all of this is based on Christian 
values. So I just wonder how many people uh, are aware that uh, we have such uh, capable uh, individuals now simply taking away jobs from our, um, our public services, uh, gently moving them into a private voluntary company, but of course with links to massive change, not only in UK, but the whole of Australia. Australia's on full throttle though. For this type for, of thing. Well, of everything, vaccines, boys are having vaccines. It's mandatory for boys to have the cervical yeah. cancer jab now over there. They really are on full throttle. And we know that from Ian and the fracking as well. Yeah. So they're... Uh, they're on, they're, on, they're on the road. So if you were surprised by that uh, last article for UK Column News, do the research yourself, have a look at the company and think of what the implications are as we see all of these services stripped away from accountable civil servants and put in the hands of private individuals closely linked with massive global companies like Sodexo. So that's it from us for today thank you very much for joining us do have a look at the british constitution group website do think about getting a uk column sticker and uh, we'll hope hope you'll continue supporting us and papers out soon paper will be out soon prior to the conference thanks for joining bye. us bye bye